And it's red in the center and blue all around With a ribbon of gold in between And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen Gulf Country, Northern Territory, and just off the coast of Borroloola is the Sir Edward Pellew group of islands, the westernmost of which is called West Island. It's a pretty island that remains relatively untouched by humans, and it's also the scene of just one of the collaborative ventures the NT government is undergoing throughout the territory. Supervising scientist Dr Scott Whiting explains. Most of the, uh, the coastline of the Northern Territory is Indigenous owned, and so to monitor sea turtles effectively, we need to work in partnership with um, Indigenous rangers and Indigenous communities right across the Territory. So for two weeks every year, science and traditional knowledge comes together here to monitor the health of the flatback turtle population in the southwestern Gulf. Uh, just trying to flatback turtle. Just making his way up. West Island is a significant nesting area for the flatback turtle. So the team, made up of Leantha Wiriara Sea Rangers and scientists yep. from the Department of Natural Resources, Environment, the Arts and Sport, takes the job seriously. Each turtle that beaches is measured, tagged and recorded on its way to the nesting site. During the first stage of preparation, the turtle clears the dry sand using all four flippers before digging the egg chamber with a hand-like rear flippers. The chamber's usually about half a metre deep and large enough to hold 50 odd eggs. After a breather, she starts laying. The eggs are round and semi-soft to withstand the drop. And once she's laid her clutch, she fills in the hole, gives it quite a thorough pat down. And then her work done, off she goes. But that's when the work begins for the team and no sooner is she out of sight than they move in to dig up the nest and record the data. Again the work is thorough and to promote ongoing understanding of the turtle's plight the rangers' families are encouraged to participate in the program so there's no shortage of willing hands to do the work. Count on there. How many? 58. Old sites are also dug up to tell their stories. It's not always the most pleasant of jobs, but it needs to be done to help determine the success rate of hatchlings leaving the nest and detect any emerging trends in the failures early enough to act if necessary. But far and away the most impressive field work I saw was a laparoscopy performed mainly to establish whether the turtle was a newcomer or whether she'd bred before. It's a simple enough procedure that doesn't appear to distress the animal greatly. And again, the importance of this in regard to the early detection of problems in the breeding cycle can't be stressed highly enough. And again, the Leantha Wiriara Sea Rangers were encouraged to get involved to better help them understand the science. Aboriginal people don't as a rule harvest flatback turtles, preferring to eat green turtles, but they do harvest the eggs of all species. So I guess it's hoped that with more knowledge of their breeding patterns, they'll have a better chance of maintaining a sustainable resource. They're late nights for the team. And come dawn and the first stirrings in the camp, the tide has all but washed away the signs of the previous night's labours, leaving only a few tracks in the sand, and hopefully some valuable data that might help the flatback survive in a changing world. And it's red in the centre and blue all around, with a ribbon of gold in between. And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen